Got another Mailbag Monday video for y'all today. Hope everybody's doing well. If you recall in one of my previous Mailbag Monday videos, I uh, referred to a lot of cards, postcards that I was going to get from one particular seller. It was about 20 or so postcards. Shortly thereafter the video was posted, I pulled the trigger on it. Ended up being 21 postcards I got from this seller. So just this package right here is just from one seller off eBay. It's 21 postcards. Now, before I go any further, I got a little rant to say. I don't like ranting and raving, but this right here is what happens when the United States Post Office shoves mail into your mailbox. Now, I have a standard size mailbox. Granted, this probably didn't wouldn't fit normally. But that doesn't mean you shove it into my mailbox. They could easily lift it on my doorstep like I've done many times before with oversized packages. And you can tell. This is what happens. Things like this is actually why I started doing Mailbag Monday videos in the first place. Because I was getting damages, concealed damages. And I was filing claims with companies. Um, getting my money back from some companies. And I needed video proof of the damages. Now, this is no reflection on the seller. The seller did exactly what they were supposed to do. I paid for shipping. You know, we uh, agreed upon a price for the combined shipping of all these cards. Got a nice envelope, properly sealed. It's got tape all the way around it. Nice, you know, address label. This is all on the United States Post Office. This is unacceptable. Had this been something, you know, expensive, I'd be a little upset. Now, don't get me wrong. There's about $50 worth of cards in here. Probably a little bit more around, around about. Luckily, they're all in this area, looks like. So hopefully they're in good shape, but we're about to find out. Okay, a little backstory about this. I was just doing some searches and postcards and came across this cell. They had a whole bunch of these postcards. This one particular type from different regions and different areas. And supposedly what it was, it was a uh, family member that was uh, getting rid of the estate of one of their loved ones. And they, you know, I guess made a bunch of traveling somehow around the world, around the country. I forgot how many postcards they had. I think it was over 6,500, maybe 7,500. Anyways, they were selling off the estate. And they had really good pricing on them, you know. Very reasonable. So I ended up buying 21 of them. As you can tell, they got they did a really good job packaging these. I think if, if they weren't in this bag right here, and the way that box looks, they would have been a lot of them have been damaged. So I appreciate the seller doing this. It's very professional. It's worth paying the, the shipping and I don't mind paying for good shipping. So let's open this one up. I'm going to try to do these as quick as possible. Like I said, it is 21 of them. I'll try to do this quickly so it doesn't end up being an hour long show here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And like I said, most of these postcards, if not all of them, are places that I've been to from the past. And, you know, I just got them just to. I think they're cool, and you can see how things looked back then. I believe this one is from the 60s or 70s of Ruby Falls. Backstory on these cards, what it is, is a postcard. You would fill it out, put a stamp on it, send it on your way. But it's more than a postcard. I consider it artwork. Okay, because when you open it up, <clears throat> excuse me, there we go. When you open it up, it's a bunch of different. At first, I thought they're all postcards, but they're not. It's more like artwork. Tells you a little bit about them, about the area. This is all Ruby Falls stuff. <clears throat> Pretty interesting stuff. And they are front and back. Trying to find a good way to show you all these really quickly. Without spending a whole lot of time on them. And then on the back of them there, it tells you about the uh, 
about the the uh, attraction or the place. And this one here is Mobile, Alabama. I'm about half an hour away from Mobile, Alabama. This is Bell and Graf Gardens, a big, beautiful uh, garden. They got different areas themed, different Chinese and you know Southern and you know, all that type of stuff. Typical, you know, big garden type thing. And in the area here, this, you know, got the shipyard. There's Mobile River. Mobile's right there on the Gulf of Mexico. Got a famous church there. It's all downtown scenes. You can look at the cars, it kind of gives you a little bit of idea. This is from, you know, the 30s or 40s, maybe 50s, somewhere in that area. But each one of these folds out. Got a little water damage, no big deal. Each one folds out and has different scenes on it. Pretty interesting. Not sure what football stadium it is. No, Lad Peebles. Lad Peebles Memorial Stadium. They're not using that one too much anymore. University of South Alabama just built a bigger stadium or added on to theirs and kind of, you know. Here's the Bankhead Tunnel. At one time it was a toll tunnel. Uh, that's Highway 90. Still used, the tolls are not there. I 10 is just right there north of it, so it's not used as much. And that's Mobile. And up next we have uh, Pensacola. Pensacola is about an hour and a half away from me. We go there fairly regularly. Not so much now with the you know pandemic and all that stuff going on, but we still make frequent trips there to go eat and go to the mall and stuff like that. They got a nice mall in that area. But just interesting, which I don't know some of the stuff. I'm not real familiar about the town. That's still there. That's on a naval base now. Yeah, it's just interesting some of the the, the things that were there that are not there anymore you know, there's the naval station there they got a really good uh naval air museum if you ever get to go to pensacola you can go into the air uh, naval base they get a free uh air museum very interesting i got a video a couple videos of it just interesting to see how things were back in the day which these are all drawings or paintings of the area so it's not really exact i guess you'd say but you know back then it's probably about as good as you're gonna get I'm trying to go for these a little bit fairly quickly and pause it when if you see something you want to take a look at a little bit closer Pretty interesting stuff, and yeah, of course here on the back of it. Has some facts and figures and stuff like that about the town. And then we got Bush Gardens, Tampa. Well, this is probably the second or third big, you know, theme park I ever went to as a kid. And actually after I graduated, me and a couple of friends went down there. Spent a week down in Tampa. Spent like two days in Bush Gardens. Probably one of my favorite theme parks. Yeah, even over Disney. Don't shoot me. Yeah, I like Tampa. Bush Gardens better than Disney. Pretty interesting. I think this is probably from the 70s. Just kind of by the way the looking of the photographs. That sort of thing. That is the uh, hmm, Python roller coaster. Got taken down a couple years ago. Made way for bigger and better rides. Older ride there. And I don't think that one's there. I don't even remember seeing that one. Pretty interesting, you know, just to see the stuff that's gone. Stuff you missed out on. And here we got Point Lookout. This is Lookout Mountain. It's at the edge of uh, Lookout Mountain, like the edge of it's like this, this whole park here. This is this point. 
one of the areas they had a big uh, Civil War battles and stuff like that. I actually have a postcard very similar to this that I got in my last mailbag video I showed off. This is the very edge of uh, the, the uh, Lookout Mountain. It's a little museum in there. Still there. Kind of lookout. That's actually the museum looking out the other way. Got the Tennessee River in the background. That's a Moccasin Bend, I believe is what it's called there. Umbrella Rock, which is that rock you see right there in the background. Let's look at the back here. Got the cannons. Cannons are still there. The views are a little bit obstructed. There's Craven's house. Tennessee River. And that's the uh, Incline Railway. I always like trains, so I got a lot of postcards from that. U.S. Highway 41, that goes around Lookout Mountain, I believe. Yep. And there kind of tells you a little bit about the area. That's just the, uh, the end, I guess you'd say, of the Lookout Mountain, Chattanooga side. Back kind of towards the middle is Rock City. Kind of the same thing. This one looks like it was actually used. Got somebody's name on it, yeah. Don't like it ever was sent off, though. But actually, Lookout Mountain does extend into the upper middle part of Alabama in that area. Well, this is kind of neat. Opens up big old folder. That's pretty cool. That's kind of the look how it looks like a uh, Rock City C7 states. You got two pieces here. Stone Witch is still there. That's it's just interesting. It all get out. It actually looks like a witch when you look at it. And they actually, I don't know where the pipe came in. I don't know a pipe how a pipe goes along with a witch, but the pipe's still there too. I got a postcard that looks just like this. The full postcard. Kind of a little overview of Rock City. Got the swinging sky bridge. It's like 150 some odd feet above the ground below it, I guess you say. Thousand ton ballast rock. Now this actually has trees and stuff around it now. And you can't climb on top of it anymore. Some idiots probably fall off of it. And I got, I think I, I know I got a card either coming or already have it. That is the uh, Shelter Rock. Gnomes aren't there anymore, but you can still actually go down there and take a look and sit down and rest your feet. I got this postcard too. It's actually a little bit, it's actually a photograph. Got the Gnomes and Moonshine. I'm not sure if that Moonshine scene is still there. I can't recall off the top of my head. I don't think it is. I hope it is, but I, I don't remember off the top of my head. And there's one of the, most, the uh, views you always see on postcards, even this day, Lover's Leap and Stone Bridge and all that stuff. And on the other side of my hometown is New Orleans. I'm uh, about an hour and a half away from New Orleans. I can leave my house an hour and a half, I could be on Bourbon Street. Back in the day, that was really convenient. This one up. Yeah, I'm not familiar with all the old houses and stuff in the area. It's uh, Lowell University. It's still there. Don't know what it looks like, so I couldn't tell you if it's the same or not anymore. Newcomb College for Girls. I'm not sure if that's there. The Ogato Museum of Art is still there at City Park. Being the hotel, public library, don't know. Chartist trees, Chartist. Yeah, yeah, you can see what it says. City Park swimming pool is no longer there. 
old Spanish courtyard. Kind of reminds me of Pat O'Brien's down there in Bourbon Street. One of my favorite restaurants and bars. And then on the back of it, a few of the heart of New Orleans. Oh, Absinthe House. That is actually the oldest standing, operating, continuously operating bar in the United States. Still operating. Country Club. Don't know if it's still there. Probably is. Roosevelt Hotel. I think it's still there. I can't recall off the top of my head. Lafayette Square. The harbor right there on the uh, Mississippi River. Of course, it looks differently now. It's kind of the same setup, but you know, a little different. Southern Yacht Club. Not sure if that's still there. Katrina might have took it away, but if it has, you know, now you can, I can see what it used to look like. And here's another one from Mobile. See if this one's any different. Yeah, it's actually different than the other one I got. And that's why I got two of them because the pack, the outside looked different. So I was hoping it had different cards in it, and it does. Got some uh, azaleas, beautiful azaleas in downtown Mobile. Lots of azaleas. They love the soil. This one's more of the uh, more of the azaleas. Bienville Cross and Bienville Square. That is a park in downtown. Pretty sure there's parks there. Not too sure about the cross. Haven't been down that park in a while. And there's, uh, I guess it's downtown. Mardi Gras. Little did, little did you know, a lot of people say New Orleans is the uh, home of Mardi Gras. They're wrong. Mobile is. Hate to break it to them. Looking north on St. Joseph Street. Sure, that's still there. Academy of the Visitation? Not sure. Haven't heard of that. Oh, park there. I'm pretty sure that's not there anymore. Murphy High School is there. I'm not sure it looks the same. You got typical sunset. Yep, we still have sunsets. Look like, look like that every day, just about. Oh, tarpon. A lot of people think tarpon's in Florida. You can get tarpon in, in Alabama, Mississippi, even in the Louisiana coast. You catch it at the right time. Get the uh, state docks. State docks are still there. Obviously, it's going to look uh, way different than that now because of the upgrades of shipping and cranes and stuff like that. Gulf Fort. Gulf Fort is about 45 minutes from my house. Depends upon where you're trying to get at in Gulf Fort. And which way you go, Highway 90 or I-10. But anyways, I thought that was interesting because back in the day, there wasn't nothing much in Gulfport to, you know, be a travel destination besides the beach, really. You know, um, the beach is here. This seawall is not here anymore. They pumped in sand and it's the world's largest continuous man-made beach, I believe it is. It's like 37 miles long from, well, I think it's the start of Biloxi, the east end of Biloxi, all the way to Pass Christiana, I think is where it ends at. Maybe Long Beach? Yeah, Pass Christiana, I think. Anyways, so, you know, this is all sand now, beaches and stuff. And, of course, the highway, this is Highway 90, and the beach is a, little, a good bit further, probably about 50 yards away from the highway. Still a popular destination for people for spring break and such. Fort Massachusetts on Ship Island, it's still there. It's not in that same condition. Hurricane Katrina did some damage on it. I think they're just now getting the island open after Hurricane, oh, the last one we had, Zeta. that came through. Beauvoir is still there. Confederate home of Jefferson Davis. Used to go there as field trip as kids. Now they probably think it's offensive and probably don't take the kids there anymore. You know. Can't learn the history. Entrance to uh, Veterans Hospital. It's still there. Uh, it's not in the same shape and condition. Obviously, it's right there on Highway 90 on the beach. Uh, pretty sure um, Hurricane Katrina probably tore up a lot of that stuff. Small Craft Harbor, Gulf Fork Small Craft Harbor is still there. 
it's way bigger than that now. And right next to it, to the west, is the large craft harbor. They have uh, Chiquiti Bananas and stuff like that come in there. And at one time they had a big floating casino in the area. And it tells you a little bit more about it if you care to read it. Go ahead and pause. Take a gander at it. We're going to keep on moving here. See, there's another picture of Highway 90 with the seawall right there. Like I said, that seawall is gone. It's all beach out there now. I, I don't know when they made that beach. I honestly don't. Schooner races. Yeah, they still have schooner races there every once in a while. Great Southern Hotel. That's gone. Yeah, it's been gone. There's the seawall. East Beach. Not there anymore. Broadwater Beach. Main building. Gone. Katrina and, and Camille took a look, took a lot of these buildings out. Yacht Club and Civic Center, it's there, but it's not in this form anymore. And I think the Civic Center is across the street or another location. Hotel Markham, I think it's uh, still on Highway 49, which is this right here, this road right here. It's different now. I don't even think it's a hotel. I think it's part of Hancock Bank, and there's some restaurants and bars and stuff like that on the uh, bottom floors there. Gulf Coast Military Academy. I don't think there's a military academy there. I don't know. Friendship Oak. I gotta get out there. I'm gonna do a video on this. The Friendship Oak is oh one of the oldest oak living oak trees. <sighs> I'm not sure how old. It's it's really old. Okay, I, I'm gonna get a video up on it once it cools off a little bit. Let y'all take a look at that tree. It's really interesting. And to the east of, Blu of Gulfport is Biloxi. I'm about a half hour from Biloxi. Leave my house, I can be in the middle of Biloxi in about a half hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Depends on where you're going. Traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spent a lot of time in Biloxi in my teens and early 20s until Katrina come through and literally wiped it off the map just about. It's nowhere near what it used to be like anymore. Keesler, Keesler Field, Keesler Air Force Base, it's still there. Of course, the barracks don't look like that anymore. They've been modernized. Edgewater Gulf Hotel. Um, the Edgewater Mall is there now. Actually, there's the Gulf of Mexico, and there is a big mall there. This has been gone since the 60s or 70s, I think it is. Probably 70s. Got the Church of the Nativity. I think it's there. It got messed up in Katrina, but I believe it was far enough off the beach that it didn't get really messed up, luckily. There's Highway 90. Same beach. It's got more sand there. And there is the historic lighthouse. Me and my daughter actually did a tour of that lighthouse here a while back. I'll put a video up here on the screen. Pretty interesting. It's one of the first uh, cast iron metal lighthouses in the area. Gulf Hills Country Club near Biloxi. I think that's still there. I don't think it's called Gulf Hills. It may be a different name now. Pictures on the bayou, Mississippi Gulf Coast. Um, I don't know any bayous that look like that in Biloxi. Maybe back in the day when it was not as populated. Not anymore. USO building. Um, it's been a long time since I've been on Keesler Air Force Base. So I couldn't tell you if that's there or not. Or what condition it's in. And so on. You can do your own research if you want to take a look at that. Okay, now we're going back up to here to my, one of my favorite spots. Lookout Mountain. Uh, by the looks of this, I'm going to say this: the red trains were the 50s and 60s, I believe. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here's to tell you a little bit about Lookout Mountain. If you want to pause and take a look at it. There you go. And it shows the car that you can actually date the pictures on uh, within you know, 10, 15 years leeway of the color and design of this car. I want to say this is in the 40s or 50s, maybe the 60s. I can't remember. You got too much going on. And you got downtown Chattanooga, the uh, Tennessee River there. And let's see here. 
<clears throat> in the high whip lookout mountain kind of the same thing as before the other postcard book entrance to point park here's that moccasin bin one we we're talking about lovers leap now here's that this is actually a photograph you can compare it to the one i did earlier the painting pretty much the same thing sign still there it's like it hasn't changed it's almost stuck in time they do have some updates here and there but it's you know it's stuck in time ruby falls i actually have a different light show on it now pretty interesting battle scene at confederama confederama used to be in chattanooga or saint elmo which is a um, suburb of chattanooga it is no longer there it's actually on point park now up there towards the end it's called something else different now they did it to be uh, uh i guess you say more politically correct or you know more user friendly or you know however you want to say it look out mountain tennessee river don't know about that don't ever see anything about that train there and there's that incline railway again of course the camera starts on focusing battle scene what this is is it's a battle there's different battles um depicting the civil war that happened civil war battles that happened and uh battle above the clouds at point park in that area now it's more modernized it probably has the same scenery and the same little you know figurines and such but um, i think they have some computers and you know different imaging and stuff behind it didn't get to go into it because i didn't realize it was what it was i thought it was just a movie and at the time when i was in the area i didn't have time to go see the movie and next we have one here it says greetings from the gulf coast of mississippi this is not sure how much of the gulf coast they consider back then we're gonna take a look here There's a little bit about it if you want to read it and there you go As shrimp boats, this picture looks like the 60s. So I'm just going to guess 60s here. Maybe wrong. Maybe right. It's above our house. Kind of went over that. Bay St. Louis past Christian Bridge. It is gone. Uh, Hurricane Katrina literally wiped it off the map. There was nothing left but the piers it sat on. There is now a new bridge that goes over that. Bigger, nicer, higher bridge. Got some deep sea fishing boats, charter. Keesler Air Force Base picnic grounds. Pretty sure that's still there. I don't go to Keesler too much. Good old shrimp. Gotta love some shrimp to live in this area. Church of the Redeemer, still there. Katrina did some damage to it, but I think they built it back better than it was or up to where it was. That sort of thing. And here on the back side of the Biloxi Lighthouse. Looks a little bit different. There's some plants and stuff around that's grown up and bushes and so forth. Dixie White House. I don't know. If it's on the beach, it's probably gone. Katrina took a lot of old houses away on Highway 90, unfortunately. There's the shrimp boats again. Gulf Park College, I think it's called William Carey. It's still there. And Fort Massachusetts on Ship Island, like I said before, it, that, that's still there. It's not in that shape. The last couple of hurricanes have done some damage to it. All right, finally getting to that second pack here. Greetings from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Got a lookout mountain there, the Tennessee River, downtown Chattanooga. That area has grown up so much, it's it's unreal. If you look at the history of that, the town actually went through a uh, revitalization program that did very well for it. Because back in the 70s and 80s, it was not a very, uh, let's just say not a nice area to go into. Which all that is after these pictures or uh, paintings were done of the area. Just kind of a, just a little mix of everything about the area. Kind of the best of Chattanooga and Lookout Mountain. That sort of thing. I 
think that's that mill still there, I believe. I'm not sure. This is Signal Mountain. Signal Mountain is across the uh, across across the way from Lookout Mountain. Didn't get to go on that area of, of the Chattanooga. And go there in the fall or the winter, or I mean the spring of next year. I'm gonna try to. Hopefully, I'll get over that side. See what's over that way. Tennessee River, Moccasin Bend. Over here is Chattanooga. It's the highway of Lookout Mountain. It's still there. It doesn't look that nice. It's the uh, guardrails are still kind of the same place. Got some old steam train. Uh, Chattanooga's a real big train area. Still is to this day. Got some massive train yards. That dam's still there. Cannon's still there. The views are not that good because it's kind of grown up, but you can still see town very, pretty clearly. And there's the old Lookout Mountain Incline Railway. The Bachman Tunnel. I actually found this off. I uh, watched a video before we went to Chattanooga and I saw this Bachman Tunnel. It goes through Missionary, Missionary Ridge over into uh, Rossville, Georgia, and that area, the other side of uh, Chattanooga. Actually went through it on the that side, the uh, eastern eastbound port. Pretty neat. It's actually two tubes. They just kind of drilled out and stuck in the mountain. I believe is how it went. Here we got another one about Ruby Falls. If you can look, if you go back and look, these cars are different cars and different age compared to the one I had before. And actually, the parking up here is no longer here, and all this area right here is a new big gift shop. So. Not much has changed with Ruby Falls except for the outside building. The whole, you know, they probably add some different lights. There's a uh, TV show, movie history of the falls once you get down in there. A lot of people is, say it's a cave. It's not a cave. Ruby Falls is in a cavern. The difference is a cavern has no outside uh, portal to the outside world. It's just like a hole inside of a mountain. A cave actually has a hole that you can walk in and out of. You get down to Ruby Falls with a uh, via a uh, elevator. Sorry, and a lot of this stuff is still there. And it's not going anywhere. It's been there for millions of years, and it's probably actually grown more since. Since all this, these pictures were taken, and of course they have they have different lighting and stuff. I'll put a link, or they have a link up for the video. That's not there anymore. That's yeah, that's too uh, they, that's too racist for these days. I can understand why. But yep, yeah, Ruby Falls is uh, one of my favorite places to go to. I don't know which I like more better, Ruby Falls. Or Rock City Gardens. Here's another Rock City Gardens. This seems a little bit more modern than the one I got before. A little bit more about it. If you want to read it, you can go ahead and pause it. Tells you a little history about it. It's got a very unique history to it. It was actually started by a guy's wife while he was uh, out uh, pushing his new miniature golf idea he had called Tom Thumb. And that didn't pan out too well. He came back and his wife had started the garden as a personal, you know, her own personal garden. She wouldn't have her own rock gardens. And he's like, hey, yeah, we can make money with this. And now there's probably three quarters of a million people come and visit Ruby uh, Rock City every year. Mother Goose Village. That's pretty cool. Has all the uh, nursery rhymes and things like that. Mother Goose Village is not actually in a cave. It looks like it's in a cave. But it's actually a metal building. Made to look like a cave. If you didn't know anybody, you'd never know. If you go look on Google Earth, you can tell where it's at. A lot of these gnome scenes are there. Snow White, Little Miss Muffet, they're all there. And in fact, they probably, the only thing they've done is some different lighting to the uh, scenes. And there's that thousand ton rock balanced up. It's a pretty cool little piece of uh, piece of the area.
Here's another one from uh, Pensacola, the Annapolis of the Air. Pensacola, Florida. This one was sent off. So, but I don't care. I like this one. I like the old, these older portrait looking deals. Or, uh, not portraits, paintings, excuse me. Like I said before, I'm not sure how much of this stuff is there or the shape it's in, you know, through progress and stuff, things change. Palafox Street. You know, I believe the median's still there. It doesn't look like this. But I'm 99% sure that median's there. You know, flowers and such. Hotel San Carlos doesn't ring a bell. U.S. Post Office and Federal Building. I'm sure it's still there. They probably added on to it or built a bigger one by now. Wayside Park at Bay Bridge. Um, that's there. I'm for sure uh, Hurricane Zeta come through and actually messed up the uh, Bay Bridge. So I haven't been down that area in the last year or so. The last time I was through there a year or so ago, this was there. It wasn't exactly like that. But, you know. Scenic Highway. Two and a half million dollar Pensacola Bridge. So this is the original bridge. Four miles long across Pensacola Bay to Pensacola Beach. This is the original bridge. The bridge that replaced this one is the one that got damaged and now they're fixing it where because sections of it were washed away from Hurricane Zeta. Zeta did a little bit of damage to my house. And now I'm fixing it slowly but surely. Area view of town, business district. Pictures of the beach. Beaches don't change. Sand's sand. One thing changes is the bathing suits. Naval Air Station is still there. Obviously it's in different, you know, probably with configurations and buildings and such. We Square, I think that's still there. Fort San Carlos. Um, yeah, I think it's there. I'm pretty sure it's not in that same form. You know, damages from hurricanes and storms and such. You know, it happens. Sink Highway, get some old sailboats. Here's another one from Bush Gardens. Like I said, this Bush Gardens is one of my favorite theme parks. This looks like the 70s or 60s. Bush Gardens used to have more animals than anything. It's more of a kind of a zoo with some attractions with it. Now it's kind of the other way around, some attractions with a little bit of zoo. And there's not a lot of zoo parts left to it. You know, they're still there. I remember back in the day they had a monorail. You could ride through and see all the animals, you know, fairly up close. You know, you're still in a monorail. But a while back they took it out or stopped it. Something happened. I don't remember. People always said, oh, one of the animals got hit by it or something. You know, maybe one of the drafts got hit. You can actually see it. You can see it right there. A little monorail. Got the flamingos. What's Florida without some flamingos? And there's the monorails. That one hangs down below the, the rail. The one that I went on, I want to say it was above the rail. I may be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it was above the rail. I'm not sure when they transferred them over. I don't know. Anyways. Like I said, that's... You know, there's one thing. There was no... uh didn't see any rods in this book. And up next here is Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky. Haven't been here. Uh, me and my fiance's five-year plan is to go here. Once we get everything situated with the house and repairs and such and going to Disney, we've got Mammoth Cave is on our list to go. I want to say she's been there before. I've never been there. So all this stuff, I couldn't even tell you if it's still there or not. If you know if anything's still there, or if anything's changed in the area of Mammoth Cave, leave me a comment down in the uh, comment section. Let me know. Pretty interesting. So now I kind of know kind of what it looked like back in the day. Pretty interesting. This was the 21st card, I guess you'd say. I got 20 cards. 
and this one was uh yeah my 21st one I didn't really plan on purchasing it but I did because I knew whenever I got back from Mammoth Cave I would be looking for postcards for them Mammoth Cave and when I get back I probably still will buy more once I get get down that or get up that way to see it kind of reminds me of a, a wider more open Ruby Falls without the big waterfall in it just a big cave with different stalactites and stalagmites and you know waterfalls and such yeah, it'll be a pretty good time and here's one on historic New Orleans I believe that's Canal Street. I think Canal Street is one of the longest um, boulevards in the United States. Uh, I'm not sure. I know it has something being the biggest, longest, widest. It might be the widest. I don't know. It's got something to it. Got some of the old houses and the, you know, the same, not same, but all that type of architecture with the porches and the wrought iron railings and such around the town you know the double shutters and stuff like that jackson square it's still there not much has changed in that area um the building's still there i'm not sure if they're apartments i'm pretty sure they are kind of hard to tell what's apartments and what's not you know the bottom floor of those uh, apartments are businesses and restaurants and souvenir shops and other places to get your money when you're in that tourist area of New Orleans, French Quarter. Pretty interesting stuff. Look at my other side here. Pirate's Alley, it's still there. Not as colorful, but it's still there. Cemeteries, they bury their dead above the ground because it's below sea level. And they'll float up in storms. And Oh, French Market, looks a little bit different now than that. Still there, different form. Got some different courtyards, scenes. And here's another one on uh, Lookout Mountain. You can tell this is the yellow train. It's a little bit different than the red train I had earlier. And the other postcard I had. So this is a different time frame. And this is actually photographs. Instead of uh, paintings. Trying to go for these pretty quickly, people, folks. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a long video, but I'm trying to get through it as fast as we can. Lookout station, bottom station, St. Elmo looks is different. The building on the left is gone now. Different building there sells ice cream and such. Ticket station is a little bit different too. Of course, there's um, Rock City, and then you got the Ruby Falls. Uh, I forgot what monument that is. New York Monument, sorry. And here on the other side, got some more pictures of the incline in downtown Chattanooga. And this sign, if I can get it to work here, it may not be kind of hard to tell. That sign is for Ruby Falls, I believe. It's still there. I'm sure they've painted it a time or two. Of course, there's Point Park now, again. More cannons again, and there's the station. I like this one, it has a good bit of a variety to it. All right, last but not least, the 21st car, Mississippi Gulf Coast. Born and raised here. Had some good times and some bad times. Tell you a little bit more about the Mississippi Gulf Coast, kind of the history of it, brief history. You like to read it? Pause, and there you go. And this is pictures here, so I'm thinking this is the 60s, 50s or 60s. Golfing on the Gulf. That golf course is still there. I think it just sold where they were selling it. It was going going bankrupt. The company didn't take care of it very well, and Casinos had better golf courses and they started going there because they were getting taken care of better. Anyways, 
Beauvoir still there. Of course, there's always going to be fishing boats in, in the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Old Spanish Fort, that is in my hometown. I'm going to do a video on it here in the next in a couple of months once it cools off. They're actually um, renovating the house, bringing it back to um, not original kitchen condition because, you know, it's you know, 2021. Um, they're bringing it back to uh, a uh, period correct, let's say, uh, form of it. Because uh, at one point they kind of modernized it when they shouldn't have been. But anyways, floundering on the Gulf Coast. If you've never been floundering, you get you a, a propane lantern. That stick he has in his hand has a spike on the end of it. And you shine the light down in the water. You see the flounder down there. And you hit, it with, hit the uh, flounder with that pole. With a spike on the end of it, call it gigging. And then you pull up a flounder. Been doing it many a years, many years. Flounder some good food. Past Christian Bridge again. We uh, we talked about that. Gulf Park College. So this one's kind of like the one before. Has more modern pictures to it. A couple of things have changed. A couple of different scenes. At one time, they had a fighter jet like this on the median of uh, Highway 90 by the Air Force Base. I'm pretty sure it's gone. I know Katrina did some damage to it. I'm not sure if they put another one back up there or not. I, I literally was in Biloxi less than a month ago and it, you know, it's just some of those things that you see so long you don't even think about seeing it or not seeing it and you know, kind of that sort of thing. I don't recall if it's still there. Kind of feel bad that I don't know. But anyways. That is my 21 card haul from one seller off eBay. Got a really good deal on these. They shipped them out really good. Appreciate what all they did for me. Packed them up real nicely. You know, UPS. Y'all got to do better than that. That's that's ridiculous. That keeps happening. I'll call the postmaster. I, I'm I'm done. Rant over. Anyways, got some really interesting cards here. It's different because you notice there's some that you know there's doubles of. You would think it's doubles, but looking for the different ones, you know the scenes change and the scenery change. The pictures change from paintings and from paintings to actual photographs you know it's just interesting to me it's this hobby is you know exploded i've actually stopped buying cards i hate to say it i stopped buying cards because uh you know this right here is about 50 bucks a little over 50 dollars for all this shipped to me i'm not complaining i got a really good deal on these cards i've seen some of these cards go for nine to ten dollars i'll have another video on my ebay rants and raves later on but anyways, I, I still got, I probably got enough cards coming for two or three more videos like this. And all the cards are coming in are cards I don't have already. So if you like this, you know, this series of videos I'm doing, you know, let me know in the comments below. You know, if you've ever been to these places and, you know, things you remember, let me know. You know, just, you know, let me know what you think about it. But anyways, I'm cutting this off and, you know, sorry for being in so long video, ladies and gentlemen, but hey. I had to show all this in one go. Anyways, I appreciate y'all watching and we'll see you next time.